Hi everyone and welcome. If you ever wanted to bring your own custom character to life in stick notes, you're in the right place. In this tutorial, I'll walk you through the process of creating a very own character from start to finish. First things first, let's head into stick figure creation mode. Here you can see all the different tools and shapes that we can use. Once you're here, we can load up our image for reference by clicking this button here. You can also follow along with your own reference image of the character that you want to create. Now that our image is loaded into the app, we are ready to start designing and building our custom character. We are going to take it step by step and create separate parts of the character. Things like the head, torso, arms and legs. Then we will piece everything together later on. You might be wondering. Why break it up like this? The reason is because stick nodes has a bit of node limitation, so which we need to work around. Alright, now let's move to creating our stick figure, starting with the head. But before we dive in, I want to quickly explain something important about branching in stick nodes. Take a look at this stick figure here. This square node right here is the main node, and we'll use it to move the entire stick figure. Now these other nodes branching off from it are what we call branching nodes. Let me show you how it works. If I move this part, you can see that only this part along with these children nodes move along with it. The same thing applies to this section here. Knowing this branching system will be useful when we start adding details to our character. Alright, let's move on. First thing first, we need to adjust the length of this segment. To do that, head over to the sidebar and manually adjust the value there. Or if you want a bit of more flexibility, you can make the segment stretch by pressing this button here. Once you do that, you can freely adjust the length as needed. And if you're using quick resize too, don't worry, you can also enable this stretch feature by pressing here. Next up, let's change the color of this segment. To do that, head over and choose your color. And I'm going to choose a uh, skin tone color for this. Now moving on, I'll use the circle shape to fill out this area. Alright looks good so far, but it looks like we need to adjust the length of the last segment. Let's fix that. Oops, looks like I made a mistake. No worries, let's undo that by pressing this button right here. To avoid this mistake, make sure to select none while adjusting the stick figures. Next, let's move on to create the hair of our character. But before that, I want to make sure that we can see the background clearly. To bring the reference on top, we can press this button here. Once on top, we can adjust the opacity to make it easier to see the reference image. Like so. Now keeping in mind the branching we discussed earlier, let's go ahead and create the outline of the hair. As you can see, we can also curve the lines to give it a smoother, more natural look. Next I want to discuss something important, making unnecessary nodes static. This helps prevent extra nodes from popping up while animating, so your character stays clean and organized. In this example, all the nodes are still movable, which means we can easily mess up the character. But in the other version, we have already made the unnecessary nodes static, so they stay hidden during the normal animation workflow. To make a node static, simply go here and check this box. You'll notice the circle turns grey and shrinks, which means it's now static. Now that we know how that works, let's make all the hair nodes static. Press here and you can see the branching order. Since the outline originates from node number 3, rather than adjusting each node one by one, we can modify all of them at once. Just go here, select modify branch and then choose this option, click set and you're done. If you want to see the view of static and non-static nodes inside this editor, you can press here. Now that we've outlined the hair, it's time to fill it in. 
we have two ways to do this. As you can see, in the first way, we can use various shapes to fill the area. The second method, which we will use here, is the polyfill tool. To use this, simply select the tool, tap on the area you want to fill, and then click finish. And we will use polyfill method for this here. Just make sure you're following the branching order. Once it's filled, let's change the color. I want the hair to be black. Finally, let's toggle the view to check everything. And we are done with the head part. Make sure to properly save it. And we are one step closer to creating our own character designed by us, ready to bring our ideas to life through animation. Looking back, I started this YouTube channel as a hobby. And it's been so fulfilling learning new skills and connecting with all of you. I'm still not a professional artist, but I'm always looking for ways to improve my productivity and skills to make my videos better. This is where Skillshare comes in, kindly sponsoring this video. Skillshare is a great online learning community for creative with thousands of classes led by industry experts across animation, illustration, design, freelance, productivity, and more. Skillshare can help you take your career, skills, hobbies, passion, or side hustles to the next level. You can find classes across different categories, whether it's 2D or 3D animation, motion graphics, video editing, productivity, or just about anything else you want to learn. And there is no limitation of the classes that you can take from any category. So I've been taking this class on making easy animations for social media by Danny Casal, and it really helped me shape my approach. He walks you through his creative process from generating ideas to scripting, designing original characters and more. His approach was different from mine. I'll have to admit, I've always been a perfectionist, wanting my animations to be flawless, which sometimes overwhelmed me and led to procrastination. But after taking this class, I found it really helpful. It helped me refine my own process and get inspired. What I loved most was how Danny broke down the early stages such as brainstorming, character development, and scripting just using pen and paper. It showed me that sometimes it's about getting the ideas down first and not worrying too much about the perfection. So it's almost start of the new year and I have set some goals to learn more skills and be more productive. And if you're interested in learning on Skillshare, the first 500 people to use my link in the description will get one month free trial. So please check them out. Thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video and supporting creators like me. Okay, now we'll move on to create the arm of the character. Let's get started keeping the branching system in mind. We'll first create the upper arm and forearm. These are the main parts of the arm and we'll add the details to both. But before we dive in, let me show you one common mistake. Here I'm creating the outline of the arm like this. And everything seems fine at first, right? But watch what happens when we try to move the parts you'll notice it's not what we intended and this is because of the incorrect branching what we actually need to do is to create the details of the arm separately and connect them correctly let me show you how using the branching concept we'll start by creating the details of the arm and forearm like this as always make sure to mark any unnecessary part as static to keep the things clean and organized next up let's move to the forearm Just to show you a different approach, I'll fill this part using multiple segments. This method can be helpful for specific designs or intricate details. Finally, let's make the hand and some finishing touches to the arm. And we are done. Next up is the torso. I'll fast forward through this part since it's the same process we've been using. Just make sure to apply everything we've learned so far.
one quick tip here at anchor points at key areas because we'll need them to connect the parts later on. Now let's move on to the leg. As you can see, I've completed it, but there are a few inconsistencies caused by the polyfill tool. No worries, we can fix this by tweaking the color of the segments. And lastly, let's create the shoe. This will be the anchor point to rotate the shoe. Now let's make the sole. Make sure to push the segments back when needed. And for this part, let's use this shape. Adjust the top and bottom. And now finally the laces. And there you have it, we have completed all the parts of the character. And don't worry about making the other arm and the leg from scratch, we'll just duplicate them. Alright, now that we have all the parts imported in our workspace, it's time to join the parts. Let's start by connecting the head to the torso. To do this, select the main node of the head, scroll down to the join button, and then press the node where you want to attach it. Once it's placed, hit finish. It is now joined with the torso. But let's fix the layering by pushing it back. Moving on, let's start by duplicating the arm and leg. And I will make one of these a bit smaller as they will be in the back. If you'd like, you can also add a subtle dark tint to these for a bit of depth. It's time to join the parts. Next, repeat this process for the all parts until everything is connected. We're almost done, let's make sure all the layering is correct. And there you have it. We've successfully created our custom character in stick notes, which is ready to be animated. Now if you want to learn how to animate sprites, you can check out this video here. And that's all for today. I hope this tutorial helps you out with your animation projects. Be sure to check out my other tutorials as well for more tips and tricks. And thank you so much for watching my video. Have a great day guys. Peace.